Hello everyone. Welcome to the Crash Course in Energy presented by the Energy Club IIT Bombay. I am Bithal and today we are going to speak about the topic of solar thermal energy. So let's begin. Here is basically the flow of the session. So we'll begin with classification of solar thermal energy into active energy and passive energy and then going further we'll look into details each of the classification. Nature is provided us with an abundant source of energy that is the sun. And the sun provides us energies in two ways, that is heat and light. To capitalize on the heat energy provided by the sun, we use solar thermal systems. So solar thermal systems could be classified into two ways, active and passive. Passive systems are more basic systems and have no moving parts. That is, they simply depend on the design to capture the sun heat or sun rays as shown in the picture. The examples could be solar oven or a greenhouse. Talking about active energy systems, active systems have mechanical components like fans or pumps to circulate the heat clank fluids which is there in the system, right? This is the solar geyser. So there arises a question that what exactly is the difference between active solar energy and passive solar energy? So the main difference is that in active solar energy, there is a process of energy transformation. That is for example through the solar thermal panels, the solar energy which is trapped is then converted into heat energy or maybe mechanical energy. In cases of passive solar energy, there are techniques which allow the solar energy to be directly harnessed without even, have to, without even having to process it. For example, it depends on the architectural design of the, uh, you know, uh, of the body which we are using. That is, the natural energy is considerably directly used for the purpose. So now that we have the basic idea of the classification of solar thermal energy, so now let's move into the details. So now let's talk about passive solar energy. Passive systems have no mechanical components and that is they rely on the design features only to capture heat. So good examples could be a parabolic solar cooker as shown in the picture, maybe a box type solar cooker again and this is a greenhouse which is a very good example of passive solar heat energy. Let's talk about a solar cooker. A solar cooker is a device which uses the energy of the direct sunlight to heat, cook or pasteurize drinks and other food materials. So basically there are two types of solar cookers and they are classified on the principles of the working principle. So number one, concentrating sunlight and second, trapping of heat energy. So talking about concentrating sunlight. A mirror surface is used to concentrate the light from the sun to a small cooking area. So the best example for you know such mechanism would be a parabolic solar cooker as shown in the picture. So talking about the working principle, parallel rays of light enter and hit the parabolic surface and these rays are then concentrated on the cooking vessel as shown here which is kept at the focus of the parabolic surface. Now, in a case where the rays that enter is not perpendicular to the lateral surface, that is the circular surface, then the rays are concentrated again at a point, but not at the focus, but at some other point on the focal plane. So accordingly, we need to move the mirror or the cooking utensil to concentrate the heat on the cooking utensil. This method is also known as image tracking. The next type was trapping heat energy. So in this, the sun's heat is trapped in a box where the cooking utensil is placed. So the best example for this type would be a box type solar cooker. So let's talk about the working principle. Some of the rays directly enter into the chamber and then there is a reflecting surface which is kept so as the rays which you know could not directly enter were missing the chamber could be reflected back into the chamber. Then the chamber has a black color utensil cooking vessel because black absorbs a lot of heat it also has an absorbing plate which is kept below so as to absorb uh, the heat energy that enters the chamber so this heat energy after being absorbed is emitted back as long infrared rays and these infrared rays are not let to escape because the box is covered with a glass cover so hence the heat is trapped inside the box and the utensil is thus heated and the purpose is solved very similar to this principle, we also have the greenhouse. Greenhouse is a glass structure with a roof and wall 
and they are generally used to grow plants which require regulated climatic conditions. So talking about the working principle as you can see, short wavelength rays from the sun enter into the greenhouse then are absorbed by the plants and the surface inside the greenhouse and are emitted back as long infrared rays. These long infrared rays cannot escape the glass chamber and hence are trapped inside it thus creating appropriate climatic conditions and the appropriate uh, ambience for the plants to grow. So next we have passive solar house. So passive solar house is another interesting application of solar thermal energy. So basically it aims at building an energy efficient house uh, which utilizes the sun's heat energy for space heating and space cooling. So basically it's an architectural design idea but is another application of solar thermal energy. So next we have a short video which explains the same. Avoid long blocks that run north-south as they make it harder to achieve a six star standard. Try to pick a block where you can have your living areas facing towards north on the block. By reducing the amount of wall area, you decrease the amount of inside space in contact with the walls and this minimises the loss of heat and makes the home easier to heat and cool. Maximise the sun to living areas by putting them on the north side. It is best to face the utility rooms to the south. This will reduce the need to heat these rooms in winter and provide more natural light. You can see here how to divide your home up into zones to make best use of solar passive design. It's important you understand the movement of the sun in relation to your block selection and your home design. You can see here the rotation of the summer sun. In summer the sun is higher in the sky. By designing your home correctly, you can make sure the home is shaded in summer with eaves and other shading devices. From this view, you can see that the sun is not streaming into the north side windows, keeping the home cool on summer days. In winter, the sun is lower in the sky. This means that the sun can penetrate through the windows to the interior of the home, creating heat gain and reducing the need for artificial heating. In this view, you can see the sun penetrating into the living area and warming the home. Once you have correct block selection and home orientation, it's important to shade correctly so that in winter you can get heat gain from the sun and in summer you are protected from the sun's rays. A simple way of achieving this is to ensure that your home has eaves or other shading devices. Pergolas can be used to keep out the summer sun. Remember to install at correct angles so that light can penetrate into the living rooms. Vertical and horizontal architectural features act as shading devices to keep out the summer sun. You can also use roller shutters or external awnings. Covered open spaces, commonly known as alfresco areas, should be placed on the south side of the house. This leaves the north side open to receive the winter sun. A covered area on the north side means sunlight cannot penetrate into the house, reducing warmth and natural light. You can still have private outdoor open space to the north of the home, but it should only have temporary shading which can be withdrawn in the winter time. The example here includes a pergola on which a deciduous vine can be grown, which provides shade in summer, but allows the winter sun in when the leaves fall off. And again here, the uncovered open space allows the sun to penetrate into the living areas. Thermal mass is the ability to absorb, store and re-release heat. Thermal mass is heavyweight construction such as concrete or brick, but needs to be used on the interior to work as thermal mass. The advantage of having thermal mass in your home is that it moderates the indoor temperature in both winter and summer as seen over the next few simulations. The winter sun shines down into the living rooms. The heat is stored in the thermal mass. As the air inside the house cools during the night, the heat in the thermal mass gets re-released back into the room and helps to maintain the internal temperature requiring less heating.
In this fly-through of the home, you can see how the winter sun is penetrating into the living room from the north side and how the concrete floor slab is storing that heat to be released at night. You can also see the living room is fully lit from the winter sun requiring no artificial lighting in the daytime. The summer sun is higher in the sky, so with correctly sized and proportioned ease and other shading devices, you can keep your home cooler by keeping the heat out. During the day, as the air inside the house warms up, it is absorbed by the slab, which is cooler because it is in contact with the cooler earth. This keeps the internal temperature cooler. At night, as the air inside the house cools, the heat from the slab moves back into the room. It's important then to have breezeways, which can be used to cool the house by opening windows or doors. Looking at the interior of the home in summer, you can see that occupants are shaded from the harsh sun. In conjunction with the use of thermal mass, it's important that your home has good breezeway design as shown in this fly-through. You can also reduce the energy required to heat or cool your home by creating an airlock at the entry of your home. This creates a buffer from the internal and external environments and reduces the amount of heat loss during winter. Now then that we are done with the passive solar energy application. So before moving on to active solar energy, let's recollect a very important concept which is required further that is heat. So what is heat? Heat is a form of energy that is possessed by our body by the virtue of the kinetic and the potential energy of the molecules. That is the movement of the molecules. So heat can be further classified into two categories. One, sensible heat and two, latent heat. Sensible heat is given by the formula Q equal to m Cp T2 minus T1 that is delta T. So when m stands for the mass, Cp stands for the specific heat capacity and uh, the delta T stands for the temperature difference. Second we have latent heat which is equal to which is given by the formula Q equal to m lambda where m is the mass and lambda is the latent heat capacity. So let me explain the same with this graph. So as you can see there is a substance which is at temperature T1 and is at solid state. So as we go on supplying heat, the heat energy is stored in the body and the temperature of the body keeps on increasing till temperature T dash. So at temperature T dash, the body has phase change. So the temperature of the body remains same but the solid gets converted to liquid slowly as we supply heat. Further if we go on su supplying heat, the, the body's temperature again rises from T dash to T2 and that happens when the uh, the body has completely changed into liquid state. So when the temperature changes of the body from T1 to T dash and T dash to T2, these uh, during these time the heat that is stored in the body is known as the specific heat of the body. Whereas during the phase change, the the heat which is stored in the body is known as the latent heat. Let's move on to the different modes of heat transfer. First, we have conduction. So what is conduction? Conduction is the transfer of heat in a medium due to temperature gradient. So conduction is given by Fourier's law which states Q of conduction that is the heat transfer due to conduction is equal to minus Ka dt by dx where K stands for the thermal conductivity, A stands for the contact area while dt by dx stands for the temperature gradient. As you can see in the picture the outside temperature is given by 0 degree Celsius, the inside temperature is given by 20 degree Celsius and the temperature rises uniform through the wall. And here the temperature and here the heat transfer takes place through conduction. Second we have convection. Convection is the transfer of heat by movement of the fluid. So here the particles of the medium actually move to transfer heat. So the convection is given by Newton's law which states Q of convention that is heat transfer to convention is minus H A delta T where A again stands for contact area and delta T the temperature difference. Here we are introduced to a new term which is H that is the heat transfer coefficient. So the heat transfer coefficient not going into details simply depends on several operational factors. So it depends on the density of the liquid then it depends on the kind of flow which the fluid has and in short is the reciprocal of the thermal insulates that the liquid has or the fluid has. Third 
we have a very important mode of heat transfer that is the radiation so radiation is an electromagnetic energy radiation which occurs uh, at speed of light so the heat transfer takes place through electromagnetic waves that move at speed of light so first we have black body a black body is a perfect absorber and emitter or uh, emitter of radiation the heat emitted or absorbed by a black body is given by the formula sigma a t raised to 4 but t is the temperature of the body a is the surface area of the body and sigma is the stephens constant stephens constant uh, value is given by 5.6697 in 10 raised to minus 8 watt per meter square kelvin raised to 4 all bodies in practical cannot emit and absorb entire radiation hence they have given by named by the term gray body so the gray body formula has an extra coefficient of e that is given by emissivity of the substance on the right we have a graph which shows uh, the planck's law which shows electromagnetic radiations at certain temperature given in a median as a function of wavelength so taking any of the curves at any given temperature if we integrate the curve we will get the total energy uh, which is given in the formula so on this note we will end this part in the further parts we will discuss about heat demand and the applications of solar thermal heat energy in detail so thank you